worked. I am live right now on YouTube. So I hope you guys can hear and see me. And I actually wanted to tune in because if you've been on the channel, you'll see that I recently just posted a video where an unknown spirit had come through. And with that unknown spirit, there was also, and what I mean by unknown spirit is a soul that the person that I was reading for, excuse me, the, the person that I was reading for was a soul that she did not recognize. It wasn't her mom. It wasn't her dad. And it turns out that her son was experimenting with, you know, Ouija boards and psychic ability. So we'll talk more about that at the end of all this. But first of all, before we get started, I want to say hello to all of you who are here because I see Laura Duffy is here. I see Maria Luisa is here. I see Steve Asante. I see uh, Liam Smith. Thank you guys for all the comments. And first of all, all right, I want to talk about why sometimes a soul doesn't come through during a psychic medium reading, okay? And here's the reason why I want to talk about this is that I recently just posted that video up on my page where this woman, you know, came to this, came to my online group reading, looking to hear a message from her mom and her mom was there. I saw her mom during the reading, but it was actually her father who stepped forward and spoke. And then immediately there were some, some of you guys who left comments and you're like, Matt, but she really wanted to hear from her mom. She really wanted to hear from her mother. Why is it that her dad stepped forward and her mom didn't? Was her mom mad at her? You know, was it that, you know, her mother wasn't in heaven? And then next thing you know, all the conspiracies started, all right? And everybody was asking all these questions. So I actually wanted to come on to talk to you guys about this because there's actually a reason why some souls come through and some souls don't. So I want to use that reading, you know, as an example. And that reading that I'm talking about, just in case you want to go back and watch it, it's called Unknown Spirit Encounter Psychic Medium Reading. It's on my channel. And here's what I want to let you know. This woman that I was reading for, she was extremely close with her mom. Her mom was her absolute best friend here in this world. Her and her mom were, you know, loved one another, always took pictures with one another, developed this really close bond with one another. And after her mom had passed away, she senses and feels her mom all the time. She gets signs from her mom. She gets dreams from her mom. She feels her mom's presence around her. She talks with her mom. And even though her mom has departed, she has active conversations with her mother in spirit. Well, there was another soul that was around her who she didn't want to hear from. And that soul was her dad because her dad had made, her dad had made many mistakes in his life. You know, he was not a good father here in this world to her. He had caused her so many emotional, emotional, uh, so much emotional pain, I should say, you know, he disappointed her so much within life. And don't you know that he was the one to step forward with a reading and with the message. And he specifically stepped forward because he said to me, Matt, I have to make things right. I have to let my daughter know that I'm watching over her because she senses and feels her mom all the time, but she never senses me. You know, sometimes this is the reason why souls come through. Remember, there's one rule of thumb. Souls will only come through if they have a message for you. If there's something in your life that they have to talk to you about, if you're going down the wrong path and they want to steer you away to a, to a different opportunity, or maybe you're about to make the wrong decision and your mom, or your dad and spirit comes through, you know, um, to show you a different way or to put things into, into a different perspective for you. Maybe you're going through a challenge. Maybe you're going through a divorce, a bad financial situation. Maybe it's that you've been depressed or you've had a lot of anxiety. Your loved ones will come through and talk about it. Maybe somebody left this world, okay, and you didn't get to say goodbye. Maybe somebody left this world and, you know, you, there was something, maybe an argument that you didn't get to resolve here in this world. Maybe it was that, you know, you have all this guilt and all this pain. Maybe it's that, you know, you were estranged from that person. Those are the souls that normally come through. And here's the reason why. I see this all the time, you know, at live events and shows. You know, I'll go out into the audience. And there will be this person in the front row that has all of her mother's things all around her. She's got her mother's handbag. She's got her mother's wallet. She's got her mother's keys. You know, <clears throat> she's hoping she's hoping to hear from a message from her mother. But her and her mom, you know, we're best friends here in this world. Her mom left, you know, left this world in a peaceful way. You know, before her mom had passed away, she got the opportunity to tell her mom everything that she needed. Her mom got to tell her everything that she needed. You know, there was nothing that was unresolved before her mother left, you know, the physical world. And then on the other side, her mom, you know, comes through and reaches her and speaks to her and comes through in dreams. Well, listen, 
that and, and then sometimes people are like, well, I don't understand. How come my mom didn't come through? But the person behind me, they get a reading from their dad who they were estranged from. They weren't even close, but me and my mom were. Well, listen, your loved ones already have a way of reaching you. They already have a way of speaking to you, connecting with you, and talking with you. But coming through to a psychic medium, you know, they use that opportunity if there's something that they didn't get to resolve here in this world and something that's going to help you to heal or help you through a situation in your life. And sometimes it's not the person that you want to hear from, but the person that you need to hear from. And I got to talk to you about this, okay? Because some psychics and mediums will say to people, oh, whoever you, whoever it is that you want to talk to, you call me up and I'll get you in touch with that person. You want to talk with your mom? I'll get your mom on the phone. You want to talk to your dad? You know, I'll get your dad on the phone. And I got to be honest with you that as a medium, I cannot make a person's loved one come through. Now, sometimes I'll ask, sometimes somebody will come to me for a reading and maybe their mom and their dad will come through and their, you know, um, their cousin will come through, but maybe they had a best friend that passed long ago that I'm not hearing from. Sometimes I'll ask the other side and that those souls will come through, but it's a request. I can never guarantee that a psychic or a medium like myself can connect you with a specific person or a specific loved one. And it's actually funny. Somebody actually wrote on my YouTube page, you know, when they were like, oh, Matt, I went to this medium and, you know, I wanted to connect with Frank Sinatra and this medium put me in touch with Frank Sinatra. And I was like, oh, I'm like, well, did you have a connection with Frank Sinatra? And they're like, no, I just liked him. I just wanted to talk to him. And this medium put me in touch. And it kind of made me question that reading because, you know, believe me, if I wanted to, you know, if, if I wanted to, and I want to connect with Frank Sinatra, Marilyn Monroe, or whoever it is, I got to be honest with you, they're not coming through for me. Why? Because there's no reason for me to talk to them or connect with them. Now, there have been people that I've sat down with that have had connections with famous people. For example, one of the one of the women's women that I was reading for, you know, she had a connection with Joan Rivers and when I was connecting with her, I was so excited because, you know, I got to talk to Joan Rivers at the same time. But remember that one of the reasons why souls have souls come through is because I don't bring your loved ones to you. You, you bring your loved ones to me when you come to see a psychic medium. Your loved ones are with you every day. They're watching over you every day. And the thing is, is that when you see a medium like myself, souls will step forward on the other side, depending on what their messages are and what they have to speak to you about. But like I said, if you did not have a personal connection with the soul here in this world, you know, Marilyn Monroe isn't just going to come through and talk to you because there's nothing that she's going to talk to you about. You know, Frank Sinatra won't just come through and speak to you, you know, just because you want to. So I want you to be leery of that, okay? Because there are some mediums out there that will say, I can get you in touch with anybody who you want. And, you know, they'll they'll uh, bring through these messages. And that always makes me feel, you know, uh, that always makes me sus, you know, sus, suspect, you know, because I'm like, let me think about this. Wait a minute. How how could you do that when it's a request to the other side? You know, I, I hope and pray, you know, before every reading that everyone's loved one comes through. But I do know that the other side has a reason on why they come through and what souls choose to speak. So I want to talk to you about that for a minute, because sometimes I got to be honest with you, there are souls that won't come through and there are souls that will not talk to me about a specific thing. And this is really important. Okay. Because I like to share with you guys, you know, what happens behind the curtain. I, have, I want you guys to know every single thing that I know. All right. And here's the reason why, because of the fact that your loved ones on the other side, they know what's holding you back, back from healing. They know the reason why you have that anxiety within your life. They know what's why you're having the pain within your life. And that's why certain souls will choose to step forward and speak. For example, you know, that woman I was just reading for the video on my page, she had all of this unresolved pain and anger and hurt from her dad that died so long ago. And after he died, she never got to resolve it. So her dad stepped forward in that reading because that was his one chance to be able to clear things up. And even though it wasn't who she wanted to hear from, I know that that reading has helped her to heal in so many different ways. And if you actually look at my Facebook page, some of her family wrote in and said, you have no idea how much she needed to hear that message. Even though she didn't want to hear it in the beginning because she was expecting her mom, she really, really needed to hear it. Well, it's the same thing with all of you. Your loved ones know you know, what it is that's going to help you in your life, what it is that's going to help you from making that bad decision and what it is that they need to warn you about, you know, at, like give like caution about in your life and the things that they can help you with. You know, here's one of the things that your loved ones also tell me, okay, is that they will only come through with the message 
if it's going to help you within your life. I can't stress this enough. That's the reason why people say to me, well, Matt, are there ever any bad messages? Like, do you ever get any bad messages for people or bad readings? Well, yeah. I mean, I consider a bad reading, okay, um, a, a message or a reading that somebody doesn't want to hear. Because sometimes there's certain, there's certain readings that I have to do that, you know, a loved one on the other side will come through and tell us something that we don't want to hear. For example, you know, um, it, was, it just happened a couple nights ago. I was doing this reading for, you know, uh, this family who had, you know, lost their son due to COVID. And, you know, they were in the process of working through, you know, uh, through the legal system to try to hold the, the hospital accountable for, you know, what happened to their son. And unfortunately, their son came through and said, you know, you've got to let this go. Unfortunately, there's not going to be anybody that's going to be brought to justice over my passing. But don't let that, you know, cloud you from hearing from me. And that was really tough. You know, there's some times when I have to deliver messages where a soul will come through and maybe they passed of suicide, but their family thought that they were murdered. And maybe that's a bad reading for their family because they were so, they were so, you know, uh, invested on, uh, on believing that somebody else did this, that, you know, it caused them pain, a little bit of pain to hear that message. Well, that's what we call healing pain. Healing pain is when, you know, at first we don't want to hear a message. When at first it makes us emotional, it makes us mad, it makes us hurt, it makes us get all of this anger out. But at the end of the day, it helps our heart to heal. But remember that your loved ones also don't come through because they know what's going to happen after the reading. So for example, let's say that, you know, you're going through extreme guilt, extreme pain, extreme hurt, extreme remorse. Let's say you kick yourself, you blame yourself, you know, you're hurting over a loved one's passing. And by your loved one coming through with the message, if they feel like coming through with the message is going to cause you to sink more into, into a depression, if it's going to, if it's going to cause you to be more anxious, to be more hurt, to, to stop living your life and instead trying to focus on the spirit world, then your loved ones won't come through. They'll wait for a moment for you to be more healed and more ready to hear a message. And I'm going to tell you guys something. This is something that I want to share with you because this is what actually happened in my family. So, you know, like I said, people think as a medium, like I can just call up and contact everybody. And I do talk to my loved ones quite a bit, but just like you, they only come through when they have, you know, messages for me. So there'll be gaps of time when I won't hear from my loved ones in spirit, but then when big moments come up in my life, they'll show me that they're there and they'll come through with the message. And I'm going to share with you, you know, for many of you who have been to my channel, you'll know that my grandmother was a psychic medium who passed it on to my mom and then who passed it on to me. Well, you're going to know that my mom and my grandmother were super, super, super close. And they were even more close. They had such a spiritual connection with one another because they were both psychic. They were both mediums. And my grandmother, God rest her soul, she knew that she was passing. She knew she was leaving this world. I was only three years old at the time. And my mom said to her, Ma, when you die, you need to let me know that you're okay. You need to let me know that you made it to heaven. Please, I want, and my mom gave my grandmother this laundry list of things to do. She told my, she told my grandmother, I want you to come and sit on my bed. I want you to come at night and talk to me. I want you to bang on the wall. I want you to do all of these things so that, you know, I know that you're at peace and I know that you made it to heaven. And she, and she made my grandmother promise that after she died, that my grandmother would come through, you know, full body apparition and speak to her from the spirit world. And I, I, I know that my grandmother told her this. It's, it's funny because as I think back, it's something that my mom and my family, you know, still talk about till this day is that my grandmother said to my mother, listen, I will do all those things. I will come back. I'll try to reach you. I'll try to talk to you. I'll sit on your bed. I'll do all these things, but only if God allows it. That's what my grandmother said. She says, if God allows me to do all of these things, I will come back and I'll show you that I'm there and I'll show you that I'm with you. But if I can't, for some reason, come back, if I can't, for some reason, talk to you or communicate with you, she says, I'm going to use these signs to reach you. And my grandmother gave us these correlation of dates, these special dates. And she gave them to my mother. And she's like, you know, you will know that I'm with you when things happen, you know, on these dates. So what's funny is, and this is how I learned, I'm telling you about this, because this is how I learned about why some souls don't come through is after my grandmother had died, my mom waited and waited and waited for a message from my grandmother. And my mom was so upset 
because my grandmother, you know, never appeared in front of her, never sat on her bed, never banged on the wall, never did any of the things that my mother told her to do and that she promised to do. But my grandmother instead came to me when I was just a little boy being three, four, five years old. I remember my grandmother sitting on the end of my bed, seeing her in full body apparition, you know, her talking to me. And my grandmother told me to tell my mom these words. She told me, you need to tell your mother this, tell your mom that I couldn't come to her because she's in too much grief. I don't want her searching for me on the other side. I don't want her stopping li living her life because of me. I want her to move forward. She says, you need to tell your mom this. So it's actually crazy because I remember, you know, just being that young, this is, this is a memory that I'll never forget. I remember that being young and saying to my mother, you know, mom, you need to stop crying. You need to stop crying. My grandmother, you know, grandma's here and she's saying to you, you know, that she couldn't come through to you because you, because you're hurting so bad because you're in, in too much grief. And she says that, you know, you need to live for your family now. And I, I don't really remember saying this to my mother because I was only three, but I remember deliver, seeing my grandmother and delivering some type of a message to my mom. And I remember my mom, his, you know, hysterically crying and just sobbing. And then after that moment, she was able to move on. But what's crazy is, is that even though my mom never got the apparitions, even though my mom never got those moments with my grandmother, you know, remember how I told you my grandmother said before she died, she would use certain dates to connect with my mother. Well, years and years went by and, you know, we didn't see the correlations. And then when I was in high school, I graduated on the day that my grandmother had died. And then next thing you know, when I became an EMT, you know, I got my certification the day of my grandmother's anniversary. And then when I actually pursued my psychic ability, that's when my grandmother actually came to me and was delivering messages to me. And then my very first, my very first gig on the radio happens on her birthday. And right away, it took all those years, but, you know, I knew right at that moment that that was, you know, uh, my grandmother just coming through and showing me and showing the family that she was there. And this is what I want to let you know, you know, the signs will come. The signs come when you least expect them, but when you most need them. So sometimes there's a couple reasons why your loved ones, you know, don't come through directly to a medium. One, <clears throat> your loved ones don't come through just to talk about, hey, hey, I'm in heaven and I'm here with grandpa and everything's good. That's what signs are for. Your loved ones are already appearing in your dreams, sending you signs, sending you different messages to let you know that they're there. They only come through when they have a message, when there's something that they have to tell you, they're in deep need to tell you from the other side. That means giving you advice, talking about something in their life, warning you about something before it happens. That's the main reason why your loved ones come through. And what I also have to tell you as well is if, you, if your loved ones don't come through, there's another reason why. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this is something that no other psychic medium likes to talk about. And I actually got in trouble for saying this. Well, I shouldn't say in trouble. Like I talked about this and you know that like there were some people who like bashed me over this, like literally like we're like, I'm not following you anymore. I'm not going, you know, coming to any events with you. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that because you said this, but I don't care. I say it anyway, because I tell you everything that the spirit world tells me. And this is what it is. Sometimes souls don't come through because they haven't been gone long enough. What I've learned as a medium is that there's a transition time on the other side. What does that mean? It means the same way that, you know, when we go into an apartment, you know, a new apartment or a new house here in this world, we have to unpack the boxes. We have to get our, our telephone set up. We have to get our cable set up. We have to get pictures on the wall. We have to get the electricity turned on before we can start having guests over. It's the same thing with heaven is that sometimes what happens is, is that, you know, during that transition period, remember when we, when we pass on, our soul leaves our body and our soul transitions on into heaven. And it's during that transition time that we see our life review. We see all the people that were put into our lives, why they were put into our lives. We see the challenges that we've gone through. We see what we've learned from being here on this world, on this world. We learn what our life purpose is. We learn, excuse me, what it was, I should say. We learn the meaning of our life. We see the people that we've helped, the people that we've hurt. We see, you know, um, uh, the, the souls that we adopted, like, you know, um, whether it be an adopted brother, whether it be, you know, a son or daughter or your pets here in this world. And more importantly, when your loved ones go to the other side, they have to learn to communicate with you. That means that your loved ones choose the signs in which they're going to send to you and how they're going to appear in your life. Your loved ones choose when they're going to appear in your life. 
and your loved ones also choose how they're going to help you from the other side. So some souls, okay, go through this period, you know, uh, a lot faster than others. I've noticed that the very best readings happen after that year's time. You know, I always know, I always know when somebody passes, you know, before a year's time, because when I'm talking to them, it's almost like being on a cell phone that's breaking up. You know, I'm, I'm hearing from them, but it's bits of, it's only bits of information. And, you know, I'll hear them and the next thing you know, another soul will try to come in and I'll hear them again and another soul will come in. It's almost like being on like a cell phone that's that's crackling or that's breaking up because the, the messages kind of come through garbled. So they're not clear. So, you know, that's what it's like for a medi- as, me as a medium, you know, connecting with souls that, you know, uh, that have just recently been gone. To be honest with you, it's easier to connect with the spirit. You know, uh, it's easier to connect with a spirit that's been gone many years than a soul that just passed recently. Now, that's not to say it hasn't happened. I mean, obviously, there's videos here on my YouTube channel where souls have come through literally the next day. I mean, I have a video that I'm going to be posting here where literally it, it was actually crazy. Like, talk about how coincidences, like there is no such thing as coincidences. Oh, my God. I'm getting the chills just thinking about this reading because, like, it, it, it like, amazes me just as much as it, like, amazes you. I think it amazes me more. But there was this family that waited literally three months to talk to me. They had gotten tickets to an online group reading. They like waited three months to get a reading. And they were like, oh, we don't know who's going to come through. We're not sure who's going to come through. We're not sure who's going to connect. Maybe my mom will come through. Maybe grandma will come through. And they were kind of just thinking over and they thought it'd be a nice thing to do as a family to connect. And it was a couple of days before Christmas. I'm going to be posting this video, by the way. So literally, literally, oh my God, I'm getting, I'm literally getting chills sharing this with you. So literally the day before this online group reading, their dad, the, their dad um, had passed tragically, literally unexpectedly. He was in his room, died. And then they literally weren't going to come through, come to the online group reading. They were like, they were so, they had, he like literally it happened less than 24 hours. Okay. And this family was like, oh my God, oh my God, should we do this tonight? Should we do this tonight? Like they were so nervous that like, what if it causes us more pain? What if we're not ready? Like, is he going to be able to come through? Don't you know that they came to that online group reading the very next day and their dad had come through and it was crazy. Was it hard to understand him? Yes, but he came through and that is what was so crazy. And he came through. I asked him, I, I remember asking the soul, how is it that you came through? How did you do this? And he said to me, Matt, the angels like set this up. Like their angels knew that it was a couple days before Christmas that their dad, you know, uh, was passing. You know, he passed unexpectedly. Nobody, nobody knew it. It was, a, it was a traumatic thing. But they set this up. So this way they could hear a message and still celebrate Christmas. And they allowed that soul to come through. There were actually souls that were around him that helped him to come through to deliver a message to his family. And sometimes that happens. So sometimes when souls recently depart, I'll notice that there are other souls that kind of group around them that help them through. So for example, let's say that, you know, somebody lost a son, you know, within the past few months. Sometimes I'll see that son on the other side with a grandmother, a father, and a best friend that will all be there pushing his soul through and kind of helping him learn to communicate. And remember that, you know, people who go to the other side, people who pass on, they're just like us. The only difference is it's a change in worlds and they have to learn to communicate with us a little bit differently. And that's why people always ask me, well, Matt, how come you don't get names when you do a reading? How come you don't get this information? How come you don't do that information? You don't get that information. And I got to tell you guys, for anyone who comments that, I got to tell you that, first of all, I do get names. They are on the videos. And I know that you guys already know that because you watch all the videos. But I don't always get them. And here's the reason why. When I'm connecting with the, the other side, something is happening in the background that you don't see. And here's what's happening. When I, when I, so here's how a reading works. I might see you. And the next thing you know, your mom's spirit is right next to you. And I see the shadow, this shadow or the silhouette of this woman. And right away, you know, I start connecting with her and I feel like it's your mom. And I'm like, okay, your mother's here. Well, the moment that I make that connection with the spirit, I start asking them questions. I say, who are you? What is your name? How did you die? What messages do you have? What is it that you have to tell your, your daughter? What is it that you have to tell your family? Is there anyone else that's there and with you? So you guys don't hear me saying this, but in my head, I ask these souls question after question after question after question. And here's what I want to let you know. Just like I said in the beginning of this video, souls choose what they will answer. Some souls will come through and tell me what street they grew up on, their name. Some souls will even tell me their last name, believe it or not. But 
there's other times when some souls will say to me, no, I'm not telling you that. And that actually happens during a reading that I was doing last year for a woman who had lost her son through suicide. And I remember like connecting with this soul and he wasn't telling me how he had died. And I knew that it was a tragedy. I saw that, you know, his mom had found, found him, but he refused to get into the final moments of his life. And I would hammer him. I was asking him in my head, you need to tell me how you died. Tell me how you left this world. Just, just show me what happened. Show me what was going through your head. Show me this, show me that. And I was asking him all these questions and this soul refused to tell me about it. And then finally I asked him, why aren't you telling me? Why aren't you telling me? And he said to me, Matt, because of the fact that I don't want my mom to suffer anymore. She knows how I died. She had found me. And he said to me, my mom goes through my passing every single day. He says, and I don't want this reading to be about that. He said to me, I want it to be about how my mom can continue living life knowing that I'm here. I want to talk about the signs that I sent her. I want to talk about the things that are going on in her life right now. And I want to show her and prove to her that I'm really here and that I'm really with her. And then, you know, after that, there was just all these validations that he showed me that his mom did. For example, you know, he showed me that his mom actually took his ashes on a trip with her. And like, no matter where she went, like she would, she would actually, you know, bring his ashes there with her. And uh, she would actually collect place, like collect, like, I don't know if you call it tchotchkes or like little remembrances of all the places that she visited. And each year she would take a different trip in memory of her son, not to be sad. And that was more important to him than talking about how he died. So you see how your loved ones choose to communicate. You see how they'll choose to say different things and talk about different things. That's exactly the reason why. And here's what I want to let you know as well. Okay is that just because a loved one doesn't come through does not mean that they won't come through at a later date. Sometimes I'll do a reading and literally I'll, I'll connect with somebody, somebody's mom. And then, you know, a couple months later, they might come back and I might hear from, you know, their best friend who had passed away. So sometimes souls take turns coming in and out, coming in and out and depending, you know, what, what message they have to deliver and what soul has to come through. So pay attention, you know, know that the signs are there, know that the messages are there and know that, you know, when they want to come through, they will. And here's another thing. It also depends on how a spirit communicates. Okay. For example, I remember doing this reading. Oh my God, I'll never forget it. I was talking to this woman and her father was there and I could see her father and like he was plain as day and, and I could see him there and he told me who he was. He told me his name and then that was it. Like wouldn't say anything else. And I kept asking him questions and everything that I would ask him, you know, he would just say, tell my daughter I'm fine. Tell my daughter I'm fine. So I said to him, to, to her, I was like, listen, I can't get, I'm like, I keep asking your father a million questions. I'm like, and I can't get a word out of him. And she was like, oh my God, Matt. She goes, listen, she goes, my father, that's how he was here in this world. She's like, he never said a word. She goes, I used to ask my dad, how are you doing? Fine. I just sit down and at, try to talk to him and he wouldn't talk. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry, I'm still getting over the flu. I, I don't have it anymore, but I still got the cough. So know that what she was saying is, is that her dad's personality here in this world was that he wasn't a talker. So listen, on the other side, we don't lose our personality. We're still the same way. And, you know, the fact that her dad didn't come through and speak, you know, for her, she found comfort in that reading. I was getting nervous because I'm like, I, like, for example... You know, the fact that I could see her dad and he wasn't talking, I'm like, why is this happening? Like, why is this taking taking place? But it was really just his personality. Someone who didn't talk here in this world probably isn't going to talk that much on the other side. But if you had somebody who was a talker, that was a busy body, that was, you know, uh, really vivacious here in this world, those are always the easiest souls to talk to because they come barreling through to connect and to speak. So I want to let you know about all of that. You know, and, and like I said, souls... Souls uh, communicate in different ways based on their personality. Louder souls here in life will come through louder on the other side. Souls that were softer spoken and a little bit more quiet, a little bit tamed down here in this world will come through with a little bit, you know, will come through a little bit gentler. So, you know, is that even a word gentle? I don't know. It sounds like, gen I, I shouldn't say that because then people can say, he said genitalia. You know I'm saying? Gentila, gentila. So uh, that being said, you know, just think about that. And also that's one of the best ways to connect with your loved, loved ones in spirit. Think about their personality, what they liked, how they talked, how they were here in this world. And then think about the many ways that they can come through and reach you 
And uh, that's one of the main ways to know who's watching over you, who's sending you the signs, and what souls are with you. And I could go on all day long. I've already been on here a half hour talking about talking about justice, about why souls don't come through on the other side. And I got to tell you guys, everything that I'm sharing with you, take what you want and leave the rest. If you don't agree with something, take don't you know? You, you, I'm not forcing anyone my opinions on anyone. I'm telling you just the things that I've experienced as a medium connecting with the spirit world. You know, I never learned to be a medium. I never read books about it. And there's no guidebook to what happens when you die. There's no guidebook about what happens when we leave this world. But, but that being said, since there wasn't a book about what happens when you die, I decided to go and write one. So this is my new book written by the spirit world. The spirit world has told me so much about heaven and the afterlife. Okay. Just like I'm teaching you guys right now. And I put it in my new book. We never die secrets of the afterlife. This book is going to be filled with all of the questions that other psychic mediums won't talk about. Like what happens about reincarnation? What happens when you can't get in touch with a loved one? You know, is there a heaven? Is, is there a heaven? Is there a hell? What happens to pets? What happens to people who pass, you know, of suicide? What happens to people who are murdered? It's all here in my book, We Never Die. And this book was written based on all of the information that those in spirit have taught me about heaven and the afterlife. So you want to get your copy. It doesn't come out till this summer, but make sure that you get your pre-orders in because if you pre-order on Amazon, it won't, it won't, um, you won't get charged until it ships. And I love that about Amazon because literally I'm hoping that you guys will go order this book. I'm hoping that you're going to forget about it. To be honest with you, I hope that like you forget about it. And the next thing you know, in the summertime, you're like, oh, what the hell am I going to do? It's a shitty day out. It's raining. Oh, what am I going to do? You know, um, this so-and-so canceled plans. And then all of a sudden, I'm hoping that you'll forget. Your, an email will pop up and it's like, oh, your Matt Frazier book, We Never Die, is coming in the mail. And you're like, perfect, I was just going on a trip. Or perfect, I had nothing to read. So it's going to be on Audible as well. Pre make sure you get your pre-orders in on Amazon, all right? Because I want to let you know that. And also, also, for those, I see all of you guys asking me, saying, Matt, how do I get a reading with you? How do I get a reading with you? Here is, okay, I got to I gotta pin this to the top, okay? Here's what I want to let you know. There are two ways to come and get a reading with me. One, you can come and see me live in person. I am coming to these places. I am coming to Las Vegas on February 11th and February 12th. Now, February 12th is sold out, but I'll be in Las Vegas also on February 11th. Tickets are going quick. Then I'm coming to Lynn, Massachusetts. Then I'm coming to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Okay, on March 5th and 6th, March 6th. Actually, no, excuse me, March 5th is sold out, but March 6th is available for Philadelphia, Pennsylvania and Detroit, Michigan. So here's where I'm coming. Las Vegas, Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm coming to the Venetian. Then I'm coming to Lynn, Massachusetts. Then I'm coming to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Then I'm coming to Detroit, Michigan. So those are in-person readings. You can get tickets on my website, meetmattfraser.com. And if you don't live in those areas, come and join me for an online group reading. It's only $19. And here's what's cool. Just like you're all here with me live right now during these online group readings, literally the same way that you're seeing me right now, I see all of you. Your cameras turn on and it allows me to see your loved ones in spirit. And it's really cool because you're with other people who have also lost loved ones. And one minute your dad might be coming through with a message for you. And then next thing you know, another person that's there is connecting with their you know, son that they had lost. And then next thing you know, someone else's loved one comes through. It's truly incredible. So for those of you who want to take place, take part in an online group reading, literally, there are only, I think, are there, are there only, I think there's only two dates left or three dates left. It's in April. I know it seems like a long time away. I'm telling you guys this because literally they sell out like usually right after being posted. And there are only a few spots left to, let me check my website. Let me make sure that we still got tickets. Yes. So the next one is April 5th. There are a few spots left to April 5th and April 7th. Look at everything else is sold out till April. So if you'd like to come, I know it seems like a long time away. I tried to make this as affordable as ever. You know, everybody's always saying to me, nah, I wish I could get a reading. I can't afford it. I can't afford it. So during COVID-19, I said, you know what? We're going to start doing these online readings. You guys can attend at home. It's only $19 to attend. It doesn't matter where you live. Just remember that they take place in the same time zone as New York City. And it's been amazing. I've been able to meet, to, to meet and read people from the UK, from Canada, and, you know, from all over the United States. So if you would like a reading with me, if you've been enjoying those videos on my channel, Come attend an online group reading. 
You know, it's not just about the readings. It's about learning about the other side, hearing the many messages that our loved ones have for us in spirit and knowing that, you know, our loved ones are always with us. So here's the link one, one last time. It's meetmattfraser.com, meetmattfraser.com. And by the way, you guys, the best. look at this, look at this. Like, I can't even believe this. Like, okay, so this is the website. Look at this. Sold out, 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 sold out. Look at everything is sold out until April 5th. So you got to get your tickets because literally, literally you guys, like you're not going to believe this, but I have read hundreds of people during these online readings, like literally hundreds. So it's the number one way to come and to connect with me. It's only $19. I, I can't stress it enough. Get your tickets for April on my website. And tonight is another one. So in just a few minutes, I already have spirits that are here, early spirits, because tonight I'm doing an online group reading where I'll be able to see you guys and connect you with your loved ones. So for those of you who are attending tonight, I cannot wait to see you. And for the rest of you, you have two jobs. One, come see me live in person or in an online group reading. Go get your tickets or pre-order my book, We Never Die. That's the number one way to show your love. But first of all, I also want to say, <coughs> excuse me, I want to say hello to all of you. Um, I see Tammy uh, Goudet is here, and Honeydew Melons is here, and Survivor is here, and I see Rissa is here, and I see Carrie Culp and Missy Jade. Oh my God, she's going tonight as well. Oh my God, she's coming to tonight's uh, online reading. And by the way, you guys ask me how they take place. They take place on Zoom. So literally, it's a Zoom, it's a Zoom event. Uh, I see Laura Duffy, I see uh, Sharon Norman and Nancy, and I see Peter Bridger and Holly Dewey and Sweet Angels Nursery and uh, Catherine Gale. Oh my God, my eyes are going so quick reading all these comments and Kitty Kitty is here and Patrick Wilson and Becky Miller and Antonia. Oh my God, this is so cool. So that being said, like I said, go to meetmattfraser.com, meetmattfraser.com, because if the dead can find me, you can find me. I got to go get re ready for tonight's online group reading. But in the meantime, go get your spot for April 5th or for April 7th. I really hope to see you guys, and I hope to connect you with your loved ones on the other side. And also on my website, you can find all of my teachings, all of my books, all of my classes, and you know, uh, important blog posts to teach you about heaven and the afterlife. So I hope you'll take a look. I love you all. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for the love. Thank you for every single thing that you guys do for me because you are the best. And literally, literally, I think of you all like family. So I'll see you online. And more importantly, remember, your loved ones are always with you, even when you don't sense and feel them.